This is Minecraft Version Adventure, my very own single player Minecraft series, where I make my way through every single version, changing each episode, starting all the way back from InfDev through Alpha and Beta until the latest release. How will I react to the changes each update brings? Will the challenges I face be way too much to handle? Find out this time on Minecraft Version Adventure. Hello everyone, my name is AJ and welcome back to Minecraft Version Venture for Update Alpha 1.1. Now before we get into today's challenge, I want to thank you guys for your comments on my previous episode, and after some tinkering in my settings, the audio issue that was present last time has now been fixed and is working as intended. So thank you guys for pointing it out, otherwise I never would have found out that there was an issue with my audio. I'd like to take a second to ask that if you guys enjoy this kind of content, that you like, subscribe, and ring that bell. That way you can get notified every time I upload a new video. With your support, I can continue to grow my channel and make more projects that I'm really passionate about. And maybe even one day, I can make a sort of career out of this. But we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Unlike the previous version, Alpha 1.1 didn't really add much, just these few items. You should know the drill by now. If you want to read the full thing, you can pause the video. Today's challenge is to construct a water-based build, something that starts on the shoreline and goes partially underwater, but remains dry. Huh. This challenge feels very familiar. I can't quite put my finger on what, though. Doesn't matter. Whatever I'm thinking of that seems familiar will just be a baseline. Kind of. I'll be using it as more of a reference than anything, taking inspiration from it, but then putting my own design to it. In order to start this project, I needed quite a lot of materials. So I started by grabbing a bunch of dirt. No, I'm not going to be making a giant dirt house. I'm grabbing all this dirt so I can use it as scaffolding. And so I can get a layout going. That way I can see how big this project was going to be. I probably collected more than I needed, but I'd rather grab more of it now, instead of coming back later to grab more, because I ran out. In this version, there aren't that many materials. I definitely feel spoiled in today's updates because we have so many different choices and even block palettes. The closest I can get to doing a block palette in this version is stone, cobblestone, doubled up smooth stone slabs as there's not a full block, and gravel. While that actually doesn't sound too bad, when considering these old textures are so different from each other, they just don't really work like how they would now. Now with that being said, the next thing I wanted to collect was wood. And I think I did that pretty well. As you can see here, there are a lot of trees surrounding my tower. While it may look like a naturally generating forest, it's not. In my first episode, I planted a bunch of saplings in this area, as I thought I was going to need even more wood to finish building my tower. But as it turns out, I didn't need as much as I thought. Don't get me wrong, it still took a lot of materials to actually complete it. Holy moly, that is a big tree! I didn't realize trees could get that big in these early versions. Although in hindsight, I think in total it was actually like three trees, but that's still insane for the amount of wood I got from it. In today's Minecraft, large oak trees are a pain to take it down as it is, just because of how intricately placed the wood is. I didn't think it could get any worse than that. Boy was I wrong. If you look online for any sort of base constructed in or underwater, you will find that most of them use glass. But if I wanted to build something truly spectacular, I would need quite a lot of it. Luckily, there's this large sand patch nearby. So I got to work on digging up this massive sand pit. When I first started to dig this up, I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into. I wasn't sure how much sand was actually here, nor did I know how long it would actually take to dig up. All day, all night, all day, all night. And did I mention all day and all night? I spent over an hour digging up this one patch of sand. And after it was all finished, I was genuinely surprised at the amount of sand that I had ended up with. I mean, honestly, what was going through my mind at the time? Hey, past me, what are you thinking? Oh, right, he can't hear me. Forgot about that. You know you don't need this much sand, right? You don't know that I might need all this sand at some point. Maybe not necessarily for this project, but... Wait, what the? You can actually hear me? Of course I can, you idiot. 
why wouldn't I be able to? Plus, I don't know how much sand or glass I'm gonna need for this project. If it's exactly like I'm picturing, you're in for a treat when you edit this. Well, that's different. I didn't actually think he could hear me. It doesn't really matter anyways. All that matters right now is that I finished collecting the sand. Well, now that that part is over, and since sprinting isn't available yet, I'm going to move all of these materials over to the shoreline. That way it's close by to the project, and so I don't have to walk all the way back to my tower every time I run out of something. Now that everything is in order, we can finally get started with the build. First things first is to create a staircase leading down to where the base will be. So, in order to get started, I had to, well, just start placing blocks and hope that it all works out in the end. And of course, that's obviously what I did. Now you might be thinking that building a water base isn't actually that difficult, but it sucks not having sponges. Without them, if you wanted to drain a large area of water, you had to actually place blocks in the place of the water. The easiest blocks to use are gravity blocks, such as sand or gravel, as you can use torches to clear out a tower pretty easily. Now you can probably tell that yes, I am taking inspiration from Green and the base he made on his Evo series, as I hinted at earlier, but I didn't want to go as big as he did, as I'm sure that later down the line, or maybe even soon, I don't know, I'll be working on a new base. But since I'm moving into this one, what will I do with my very tall tower? I think I'll probably be turning it into a mine. If one of the challenges say to construct a proper mine with all the bells and whistles and whatnot, I can use that as a baseline, and then upgrade it from there. Otherwise, I might just leave it as it is. Or, I could turn it into my farming area. I don't know. This project is already using a lot of sand. Luckily, like I said, I can just use some torches to take down the towers so I don't keep breaking shovels. But if you're comparing how much sand I used for the staircase to how much it took to fill in the main portion, there's a clear winner. And of course, for some reason, I decided that working through the night was a good idea. I almost died a few times as I have not lit up this area whatsoever. The mobs just kept spawning and spawning, almost like this was a wave-based survival game. But it's not, it's Minecraft. I know that in today's versions, the mobs spawn a lot when it turns night, and you can sleep of course, but let's just say that you don't. When you look out at, say, a plains biome, the mobs are very spread out, not clumped together in packs like they are in this version. So the staircase is now done, and it may be a bit lower down than I was wanting at first, but I think it all looks good. The next part is to figure out the shape of the main portion. And as you can see, I didn't really go that big. While I was recording this episode, I was thinking that I was going to be building this massive underwater base that was actually comparable to what Green built during EVO. But then I thought, wait, that's not a good idea, as this is only the third episode and I'm on my second base. But I think it works as a pretty good starting point, as from here I can branch off with underwater tunnels that lead to other parts of my base. I can have separate areas for my storage, for farms, for really anything I can think of. In hindsight, I definitely would have gone a bit bigger. Probably not as big as I was envisioning, but at least something bigger than just the basic circle size, with the 52125 design. Maybe something elongated to give it a bit more uniqueness. But now I just have to sit here placing thousands upon thousands of blocks of sand. I might be a little off of that estimate, I'm not really sure, but I think it's pretty close. But I have to do this in order to drain this area of the water, that way I can actually build a functional base down here. As like I said earlier, we don't have sponges for quite a while. Alright, the final blocks are going into place, and that completes the filling part of this. Unfortunately, that's only the halfway point. I now have to take down all these towers, one by one, another after another until it's done. Phew, that took a long time to do. Now I can work on digging up a floor and actually putting together the design of this place. Now I want to give you a description of how I go through my design process. Usually I would use Lightmatica for my builds, but as I said in my first episode of this, I won't be using it at all, not even during the versions in which it has releases. 
For this series, my thought process behind designing these builds is very, let's just wing it and see what works. Now I know that might not be the best idea, however, I wanted to do something different for this series. For this build in particular, I was of course inspired by Grian, but also the bases I made back in 2013, 2014, in the old days of the Xbox 360 edition of Minecraft. Back in those days, I really couldn't build, but that didn't stop me from trying. Most of the time when I was building a base, it would either be underwater, or built into the side of a mountain, or in a cave. I knew nothing about gradients, block palettes, or anything like that. I didn't even know how to transition properly from different parts of a build. It was very cut and dry. And it worked for that time. But as the years have gone by, I believe that my building skills have improved. And I will be showing you guys those skills in a few months during another behind the scenes project. In the coming months, and for quite a while after that, most of the content I'll be making is on Minecraft. There will be some other stuff sprinkled in, like Henry Stickman, Quest for Wally, etc. But most of the projects that I have in line revolve around Minecraft, so I hope that you guys will enjoy that. I can't give out any spoilers just yet, but what I can tell you is that what I have planned I am very passionate about, so I'll be taking the time to do it right and the way that I am envisioning it. The next part for this build is to replace the walls. My plan was to use glass primarily, with some stone used as an accent block for the edges. But before I could place anything, I have to remove all these sand pillars. However, they are holding back the mass amounts of water from getting in. And after taking them down, it started to pour inside, which made building this very difficult, as I had a hard time moving around. The process of taking down all these pillars and then replacing them with the correct material took way longer than it should've. If you watched my first episode, you'll know that I wasn't too happy with how the tower turned out. And I'm getting the same sort of feeling for this base as well. While my thought process was sound, my actual building wasn't. See, I have a problem with this series. My problem is that I don't want to venture too far out. Because of how many updates there are to come, and the difference in how terrain generates between the versions, I don't want to have to worry about venturing thousands of blocks out just to find a new material. That all being said, if I would have gone outside of my known area, I could have gotten materials such as snow or clay. Those two blocks would have definitely been preferable to the stone and wood that I'm still using for my build. So just a note to self, I will start to venture out farther in order to find different and better materials to use for future projects. As once I have access to those, I can build bigger, better, and definitely more detailed things. With that little rant out of the way, we can get back to talking about the build in progress. I don't know what it is with this version, but maneuvering in water is next to impossible. It is quite possibly the slowest thing about this version. And here I was, thinking that not being able to sprint was slow, but nope. Especially having to move upwards in water really sucks. As you have seen here, it takes forever to move up even one block. But I just need that one more block to be able to reach, that way I can place this pillar. I kind of stuck with the same sort of floor pattern for this base. However, instead of using stone and then doubled up smooth stone slabs, which takes a lot of materials to do, I'm using wooden logs and planks. In the same checkerboard pattern as it still looks nice, it's just different as I haven't used wood in this build yet. Moving into the night, for some reason I decided to keep working on the build instead of hiding in a hole like I've been doing for most of the nights. This wasn't a smart idea obviously, as I risk getting blown up and dying. Not only does this suck because I would have died, but as you all know, creepers blow up the blocks around you. And since this isn't 1.14 or later, not all the blocks drop. Some, if not most of them, will get destroyed in the explosion. Alright, most of this is done, but it just needs one more thing. Need to go and grab all my chests and whatever else from my tower and bring it over here. Then it should be all complete. And I think that's pretty much it for this base. All I need to do is to take a step back and see how it looks. But first I want to fix up these creeper holes as they've been bugging me. No, absolutely not. I think we can fix it though. There we go, that's way better. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. Be sure to comment hashtag VA1 and I'll give your comment to heart. And while you're down in the comments, be sure to give me challenge ideas for future updates. If I like your idea, I'll use it and will feature your comment in the video. 
With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you did, and let me know what your favorite part was. And be sure to turn on the notification bell, that way you can get notified every time I upload a new video. And as always, have a merry all day. Goodbye.